O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning we start a three-week series into the creeds. Specifically, that we're going to be looking at the Apostles' Creed, because that's a creed we say every week. Um, but first we have to understand what a creed is. What is a creed? Statement of faith? A statement of belief? What is the word creed? Where do we get the word creed from? Bonus points to any credo, which means, literally means, the first words of the Apostles' Creed. What are the first words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe. Credo literally means, I believe. And where we get the word creed from is the word credo. So the word creed means, I believe. As we were singing this morning, I was thinking of all the things about I believe, right? Spirit of gentleness. You swept through the desert, you stung with the sand, you goaded your people with a law and a land. And then the next verse, you sang in a stable, you cried from a hill, then whispered in silence when the whole world was still. What is that? You sang in a manger? Who was born in a manger? Jesus. He cried from a hill. Where is that? Calvary. And you whispered in silence when the whole world was still. Where was that? Not the beginning. This is all about, this verse is all about Jesus. It's on the cross. It's finished. The curtain is torn. And everything's quiet when Jesus dies. And then down in the city you called once again. When you, when you sprang, it's not all about Jesus. Because this part, last part is about the Holy Spirit. But there's, that is a creedal statement. The canonical praise we sang is, is, is a three-part creed. One about the Father, one about the Son, one about the Holy Spirit. The creeds are not just things we have printed in our books. It's not just the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the... Nice. Athanasian's Creed. How many of you have ever read the Athanasian's Creed? You have? It's not even actually in our book. When they decided to print this book, they, did, they took it out. Because we, the only time we would ever use the Athanasian's Creed is on Holy Trinity Sunday. And, and that kind of fell out of practice. The Athanasian's Creed is several pages long. And, and lots of stuff to say that we believe. But to our reading this morning. Our reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 through 5. We could have read the whole chapter. First chapter and then the, the first four verses of the second chapter. To talk about the whole first creation story. Where God created. But it's enough for us to just look at this. To understand who God is in our lives. Right? Because the Apostles Creed says. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. And it's all we get about God, the Father. And there's so much more to what God has done for us. But it, the first five verses of Genesis, in the beginning, right? Do you realize there's a baseball game in the Bible? In the beginning? God, in the beginning, the earth was a formless void. And darkness covered the face of the deep. And while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light. There was light. God saw the light was good. And the God separated the light from the darkness. And he called the light day and the darkness night. And there was evening and morning the first day. So the light was made and it was good. Now what is this light that God made? The sun. You'd think so, right? not actually if you read a few days later it says God created the stars in the heavens later the light that God creates that is separate from the darkness is not the stars and the sun it's just light the presence of God in the world and what would I what would you say to me if I told you that this is a bad translation and it has to take my joke out right if you if you do yeah exactly there's a bad translation of what the text says. And it's not the beginning. In the beginning. The word the is not actually there. If you read the Jewish 
Publication Society's version of the Old Testament and the Jewish version of the Scriptures. It says, when God began to create. Because here's the thing. When, if you actually look at the beginning of Genesis, Genesis 1.1, the first letter of that, of that chapter, of that verse, of, that, of the whole Bible, starts with the letter Bait. And who knows what letter, letter Bait is of the Hebrew alphabet. Right, sounds like B, right? B, B. It's the second letter. And what does that mean to us? Well, really, nothing. So what? The first word starts with the second letter of the alphabet. But to Jewish scholars and to, to those who study the law, with the first book of the Bible starting with the second letter of the alphabet, that implies that there's something that comes before this. Where's the alpha part of this? Right? There's something that comes before Genesis. And what is that? God. God comes before us. Because it says in the beginning, or when God started to create. So God has to exist before the beginning in order for God to be able to create the beginning. Right? We have to believe in God. And know that God has always been there and God is always going to be there. No matter what happens in our lives, no matter where we go or what circumstances we face, God is always going to be there. And that's why we confess each and every week through the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because God created everything that exists, including you. And if you read through that whole creation story in Genesis, you'll get to the part where He created humans. And, and He saw... And, we are humans are created in the likeness of God, and he saw what he created, and he said, this is good. But back to this creed thing a little bit. Can anybody tell me what the earliest creed was for the Christian church? It's three words. It could be four words, depending upon if you throw an extra word in, in the middle. Three words. First one starts with a J. Ends with an Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. The second word, well, if you put this word in, Christ, right? Now is a little bit more information here. Is Christ Jesus' last name? No, what is Christ? It's a title. It means Messiah. Right? So Jesus Christ, the third word, or second word, is. Very good. And what's the last word? Lord. Jesus is Lord. The earliest confession of faith. The earliest creed ever known. There's also other creeds in the Bible. If you read um, Deuteronomy 6, the Lord our God is one. Um, Ephesians chapter 2. Um, the Christ Him. Jesus Christ emptied Himself and became human and, and emptied Himself of who He was as God and went to a death, yes, even death on a cross. There's other creeds throughout all of the scriptures where it talks about God being slow to anger. He's merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Right? But Jesus is Lord is the first creed that early Christians would have said. And what kind of statement is that? A true one? It is a true one. But think about the time. What was, what, who was the government at that point in time? Rome. And who was Lord? Caesar. So to say Jesus is Lord was what? Treason. Death. A very political statement. Because all of religion is political. And Jesus calls us to go into the world and do things that, that the world doesn't want us to do. And that's why we have to continually remind ourselves and say this creed week after week and time after time. And just believe that what we say is true. Because God has created each and every one of us to make a difference in this world. And sometimes when we're called by God to make a difference in the world, that means we have to stand up against what the world thinks is right and do what God has called us to do. 
And know that no matter what happens in and through that, that God is always going to be with us. Because God created each and every one of us to make a difference. And I believe that. That God put a call in your heart so that you can make a difference in the lives of other people around you. So don't hold that in. Share the love that God has given to you with all of the world so that everyone can come to understand exactly how much God loves them. One last statement. Martin Luther puts it in a large catechism to say, I believe in God the Father. When he's talking about the Apostles' Creed in this first article of the Apostles' Creed, he says, I hold and believe that I am a creature of God. That is, that God has given me and constantly sustains my body, my soul, and my life. And God does that for each and every one of you. Because God created you. And God holds you and sustains you and gives you everything you need throughout all your days. So share that with everyone so that they too can know how much God loves them.